Coming up on today's episode of Hidden Roll with returning guest, Dan Klitzner. Take the sausage-shaped bean bag, throw it overhand like an ax, and it thwacks. That's right, sling it between the slots. So satisfying. So do you get the little sausages and we get the big sausages? How, <laughs> why are there, why are there three? <laughs> Can I just say something that I'm sure people are familiar with by now, size does not matter. <laughs> this is no joking matter. Sling It is a highly competitive game. That is the latest game that we're, we're working on with my partners, Gary and Brian at Kid Group. You can imagine that's something they took very seriously. So a lot, prove, a lot at stake right there. A lot at stake to prove you had the best sausage, made, sorry, made the best sausage. Um, you had to throw it and have it stick. You're listening to Hidden Roll, the podcast that introduces you to the brains behind your favorite toys, games, and all things play. I'm artist, engineer, and game inventor, David Yakos. And I'm game designer, Branson Faustini, and together we get to talk to the people who make the world of fun. And not too many people have made as much fun as our guest. He's actually a return guest, uh, Dan Klitzner, here again on Hidden Roll. Uh, Dan, thank you so much for being here. Thank you, guys. It's great to be back and uh, talk about more of my hidden roles. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of roles. Um, if you don't know Dan, uh, you most likely know products he's made. Um, he is the genius behind Bop It. There's been like somewhere over like 40 million Bop It's produced around the world. And so if you've never played Bop It, I feel like you, maybe you've never played. Uh, <laughs> but ba Dan has brought us masterpieces like Bop It, uh, also Pop It. But we're, today we're going to talk about Sling It. <laughs> I'm very anxious to sling it with you. <laughs> <laughs> I will sling it with you anytime. So uh, <laughs> what are we slinging, Dan? So Sling It is the medieval sausage slinging challenge. It's actually a game. Um, but it is a challenge based on this ancient contest of festival uh, of the sausages. The way you play is each player gets four of these sausage-shaped beanbags. We call them sobrasadas in honor of this ancient tradition. If you're listening, I'm holding a, uh, a beanbag, like I said, that is sausage-shaped. It's pretty self-explanatory. Um, nothing funny about it whatsoever. <laughs> Just a sausagey beanbag. <laughs> <laughs> That's correct. So you take your sobrasanas and you sling them overhand, like, or you can do it underhand, but most people do it overhand, like an axe. You take turns, just like cornhole or something, but you're you're slinging them into these slots, like an axe, and it thwacks into these five slots of the vertical target. And your goal is to thwack this this beanbag in there. And it makes here, let me see if I can get the sound. How did that thwack. come through? <laughs> that's, that's a good sound. Thwack. So <laughs> that's the thwack. It basically slings like a sausage, thwacks like an ax. And I'm sure for all those sausage slingers out there, you know exactly what, I, what I'm saying. When they thwack in there, you're trying to be the highest on each slot. Only the top sausage in each slot scores. Well, why don't, we, uh, why don't we go outside and give it a try? <laughs> Are you ready to sling it? <laughs> let's, let's go. We're ready. Okay, let's go outside and sling it. I've got this set up in the yard where we've been testing the various prototypes. And people describe it as like axe throwing meets cornhole. Take the sausage-shaped beanbag, throw it overhand like an axe, and it thwacks. That's right. Sling it between the slots. So satisfying. Here's how the scoring and sling it works. You can only score if you're the top sausage in the slot. So just as in medieval times, we believe the center was worth two points and the sides were worth one point. Each slot counts separately. So here, if yellow were to sling their sausage above orange, they get the point for that slot and orange gets zero. So at the end of the round, here's the score. Orange gets two points for being the top sausage in the center slot, and also one point for being the top in one of the side slots. But in this one point slot, yellow actually scores two points because both yellow sausages are higher than the orange sausage below. We call this sausage stacking. In the case of the orange sausages, they're not technically stacked because the yellow player wedged their sausage between the two orange. 
There is one other way to score, and that's called draping the crown. Draping the crown is a risky but rewarding shot to take. You throw it softly, underhand, for instance here, it now eliminates the other scoring below it and only that shot counts, and it counts double. And that is one of the most compelling, competitive parts of this game is the last shot can almost always flip the score around. One of the coolest parts about Sling It is it's very portable. When you're done, you just leave the bean bags in the slots, fold it up, and walk away. Well, it's a lot of fun. I'm uh, I'm ready to have that at uh, in my house. <laughs> That's going to be in our office. We're going to be slinging sausages everywhere. <laughs> You'll have to start a no sling it at work rule because we'll be playing it too much. Like I'm telling everyone right now is like, don't bop it, sling it. <laughs> uh, honestly, we are obsessed. And it's one of those games that it makes everyone so happy to play it. Besides the jokes that they make about the shape of the beanbag, then it's just the super addictive feeling this you know flack of it hitting is super satisfying you know i know as like professional inventors like we're typically bringing our games to to brands like it's usually they were meeting with the leading brands trying to get them in there but you know kickstarter this time that's a pretty big endeavor with lots of work why why kickstarter this time uh just didn't fit a lot of the people that we normally pitch to it's a little bit peculiar for one that uh Many toy companies would not be able to launch it. It's a more expensive product. It's a backyard product. And the other side is wanting to control it, wanting to make it something that uh, that is very easy to, to, it's kind of easy to do in low quantity compared to other things. So it just came to us that a type of product and the category, it was more of something that we wanted to do grassroots and it's just a really fun product that we're anxious to do, uh, to kind of mark, try it ourselves and learn from it. We might do uh, another iteration of it after we're done with the Kickstarter. But right now we're just, it's pretty fun to get it in front of people and just get their reaction. Uh, why a sausage shaped bean bag? Where did that come from? It comes from a couple intersecting directions. My partners and I were working on a concept maybe a few years ago called slots where the insight was that although a lot of games like cornhole uh, are about getting a ball in a hole or getting a beanbag in a hole, we saw on uh, YouTube and TikTok and things, people doing these challenges where they would take a piece of toast and throw it sideways and land it in the slot of a toaster or <laughs> a CD or a DVD and throw it into the slot. And this was sort of like a, one of those challenges that was really hard but amazing and when it worked everybody celebrated and we thought that was a cool insight for a game started working on different ideas about throwing underhanded discs through into slots and went pretty far with it pitched it to different companies and sort of left it alone for a while after kind of coming to a dead end because the idea was when you throw something at a slot and it's so amazing that it works it's not much fun when it bounces off you know 20 times for the one time that it, it goes in so <laughs> we're, we sort of started this like well what happens when you miss and that led down to this path of, well, you have other slots, center slot. You can kind of imagine as an inventor how that would go. Eventually came to the uh, realization that throwing a circular beanbag made sense because it would, if it, if it didn't go through the slot, it could stick somewhere else on another slot. So I'm, as, I, as you imagine that thought process, it was very much thinking this was going to be a game where you threw underhanded a circular beanbag and tried to land it in these slots. And it was very, really a great game. And we kind of tried it. Uh, I have tons of prototypes built over, the, over a year or so. Uh, that was sort of where we were going with it. My wife, uh, Alicia, was helping to make the bean bags and making them like a, a donut. Imagine making a bean bag where you you have to cut it out like a donut and fill it and throw it because we it was easier to grab when it was like had a hole in the middle and things like that. So hold that thought. That's where we were. In the meantime, somewhere in there, I took a trip to Mallorca where we were bike riding. And everywhere you go in Mallorca, there's these things called sobrasada. There are these sausages that are made like kind of like a national pride and you see them hanging everywhere. Let's just say they're quite photogenic, <laughs> as you can imagine. 
And so have you been to... Uh, and this is in Spain. Spain no. Spain, or... Well, Mallorca is you know, part of Spain. It's, it's all over Spain. And it's really Portugal has different versions. A lot of the countries there have a thing called Sobrasada. And everyone sort of takes pictures and, you know, joking about it. And, and so here's where the story gets, let's say, a little interpretive. Looking at this thing, kind of like, where did this come from? Where is this... Where is this national dish come from and i saw some etchings some old paintings and uh the the sausage maker who was there and i'm going to just claim that this story may or may not be completely true but you get to decide what parts are <laughs> but uh <laughs> the sausage maker was trying to gesture to me talking about what this drawing was this painting that i saw which showed looked like people were throwing sausages at a at these vertical bars and I interpreted what he was saying as that the sausage makers in this old medieval village would throw the sausage at the palace gate to see if it would stick between the bars of the gate. <laughs> and if it stuck, it was deemed the perfect thickness and consistency for the king. Uh, this is my theory. Again, this is all with hand gestures, so I could be wrong in this story. <laughs> I definitely might have gotten some details wrong, but I'm pretty sure that what he was saying was that the villagers would throw the sausage. If it went through the bars, it was too skinny. If it bounced off, it was too thick. If it stuck, it was perfect. And that was this, this festival that, again, I, I don't really speak Mallorcan, and I don't even know if it's a language, but I do know <laughs> that this festival, I believe, was called Dio de los Sobrasada, Day of the Sausages. Uh, <laughs> They would celebrate, and whoever threw their sausage the highest and got it to stick on the highest point of these bars, that was the winner. So you can see that this was a very, very peculiar theory and story. I, I guess maybe there's people who know sausage making, and to them, this is like an old story, and they can just clarify that. <laughs> well, anybody that's made sausage definitely is yeah. going to. <laughs> yeah, anyway, I mean, a lot of there's this a lot lore. of people are probably experts, and they can say, "Of course, you didn't know that's how they used to test sausages." And I'd say, <laughs> "Makes sense, I guess." I, my interpretation was correct, so I challenge people to decide for themselves or to find a sausage expert to tell them if this is how they tested them. So that was very um, inspirational. One of the theories was that they would use. Like the sausage makers weren't necessarily the strongest guys in the village. They would make great, these great sausages and they would sometimes to get the sausage to go as high as possible, you would enlist this burly axe throwers of the village to throw because you threw it like an axe. You held it like a sausage, but you can imagine getting some champion axe thrower to throw your sausage <laughs> for you was going to increase your odds kill of a man with that sausage. <laughs> <laughs> it's, you know. In the time, maybe it could have been a weapon at some point. I don't know that. <laughs> that may. So, um, so that's our theory that they would they would take these champion axe throwers, they would throw sausages as high as possible, and if they stuck, that sausage maker got to be crowned the royal sausage maker of the king. And this is what we we think today was the festival of Sobrasada, and we have also uncovered some interesting material through it. Well, we used AI to uncover this material, but we have <laughs> archaeological, found, archaeological discoveries through, a, yeah, through archaeological AI. Archaeological AI discoveries. That's, and it's a new field. We've, we've mysteriously found a crest with the date 913 on it. <laughs> and also 1111, which we believe was Day of the Sausages, which makes sense, November 11th, 1111. They're like, you know, sausages, yeah. <laughs> like four sausages. And that's how many sausages, day. yeah, we have in the game. So in the game, there are four sausages for each player in honor of 11-11. And what's really a crazy coincidence is that this year, 2024, is the, the 1111th anniversary yeah. <laughs> of Dio de los Sabrosada, November 11. On 11-11 this year, it just so happens because we found through AI, a uh, crest that says 913 on it. I think they popped it, it in my Google calendar on the holidays, uh, <laughs> auto-filled. Auto so this year, we're hoping if we're successful the Kickstarter, that on November 11th, 2024, the 1111th anniversary of the first festival of the Day of the Sausages, we just might have something here. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that definitely that AI uh, archaeological Link is definitely a new field that might be emerging. Oh. 
It is. You just, it's amazing. You just put in something to AI, like, <laughs> was there a festival of the sausages? And show me what it would look like. And it shows it to you. And it's pretty believable. So we're, we're believing it. Strong um, historical evidence. Yes. <laughs> from historical <laughs> potential hearsay, evidence. From, potential uh, evidence. <laughs> from someone who I met who didn't speak English in Mallorca. But I'm pretty sure, you know, we've, we've interpreted this right. So uh, oh, what I haven't finished off is how did that inspiration of the sausage slinging festival influence us going from circular to straight with the beanbag? And that was because we're actually, it, it really didn't occur to me at the time when I heard this mythical story. It was when I came back and we were making the beanbags and I said, wouldn't it be easier to make the circular beanbag instead of cutting a hole into the fabric, make a tube and then sew the tips of the tube together to make this donut shaped beanbag. She made the beanbag and then I before said, oh, it didn't really go into a circle very easily. I said, well, maybe I should, let's try throwing it like this first, because I was sort of thinking about this sausage slinging history and through it, got that thwack. And, you know, the way it flew through the air end over end, like an ax is literally immediately. It was like, that's it. This is, I called Gary and Brian. I'm like, this is, I think we have an answer to the slots uh, dilemma of how to make this a great game. It just felt so good. It meant that the, it meant that the target could be more vertical because it really felt like you were throwing an ax into this vertical target. Um, it just changed everything. Just in being open to that idea that there was what we say in invention is just, be ready to leave what you thought was the answer behind immediately if you find that there's a better solution. And it was apparent right away. Almost accidentally, like just trying to figure out how do I make these another way? And then there you had it. That's right. And listening to, you know, when you're on a foreign country and someone explains something to you with hand gestures, paying attention to what they might be saying and reinterpret it for your own benefit. <laughs> I'm really curious what those hand gestures were that were <laughs> describing. So, uh, honestly, we're obsessed. We're working with our partners at Get Moving Sports, who are uh, the guys that we did Perplexus with, who brought in, who actually got, were our manufacturing partners. They started a wooden toy company, Backyard Wooden Toys, called get moving sports and we were just talking to them and they said do you have anything that would be like a backyard wooden game i said boy there is this one thing that i don't know which toy company would ever do it but we'd love to work on it together so there are partners um matt and danny from get moving sports as well as we're working with off-duty ninja which is a kickstarter marketing group wonderful people there that are helping us because we've never done this before. So how to, how to navigate the Kickstarter. <laughs> and, and you guys are knocking the videos out of the park too. It looks like you're having a lot of fun making making some of the promos, the we historical are, documentations. <laughs> we, we are recreating what we think was definitely a must have happened in medieval times when they were testing out their sausage slinging skills. So you can see on our Instagram, you know, some examples of what we think was the, the exact exact accurate way that it happened um so you should check those out yeah i'm curious how much the the uh of the rules have you know come through from the hand gestures from the and the etchings you found in deep caves and all of the <laughs> yeah. everywhere else that you so this wasn't a game from what we can tell dia de la sabasada was a, was a very serious festival i mean it was joyous as festivals were back in medieval times but it's pretty clear that they they wanted to win you know, and so it wasn't really a game. It was a contest. And there was a lot of pride at stake who, who had the best sausage. That's something they took very seriously. So a lot, prove, a lot at stake right there. A lot of stake <laughs> to prove you had the best sausage made, sorry, made the best sausage. Um, you had to throw it and have it stick. So actually, that serious competition is part of what makes this game great. It is, let's say it's socially ridiculous or ridiculously social because Everyone makes fun of the sausage shaped bean bags, but when you see the game, it is a very, you know, seriously competitive. So we say ridiculously social, seriously competitive. And that's kind of a secret, we think, to any great social game. If you're out there trying to have fun, go ahead and joke about the sausages, but let's see you win. 
That's the question. <laughs> Who knows how to handle the them and throw them the yeah. best? <laughs> exactly. You know, one of the things I know with a lot of the Kickstarters, it's like, oh, you know, I hope they can actually fulfill this and make it. But what's nice is you've already got manufacturing in place. You've got all of the connections. This is, you know, you've been there, done that. To some degree, it is. You're saying sometimes people don't like to support a Kickstarter because they don't think it'll it'll come to pass. But in this case, we are making 500 of the big ones. Uh, knowing one way or the other, we're going to sell them or use them or give them to friends if nobody buys them. But I'm pretty <laughs> sure we'll sell, we'll sell 500 of them. And that uh, if we fulfill that during the Kickstarter, hopefully we'll, we'll oversell. But if we fulfill that, then we've calculated we'll we'll break even enough that we can kind of continue and and start to you know decide we have a great product and and probably with a few changes after the Kickstarter to make it. You know, whether it's rules, the consistency of the beanbag, you know, we'll, we'll probably get a lot of feedback from that first 500. When is this going to be going live? You can go to slingitgame.com now and just get on the, the list. But the actual Kickstarter starts June 4th. June 4th. Nice. And uh, maybe by National Day of the Sausage, what is that, 11-11? <laughs> by 11-11, we, wanna, we were hoping it's right in the middle of tailgate season. You know, we're hoping to get enough of these out there that people can continue the legacy of sausage slinging centuries later. <laughs> well, you'll uh, change the world again. <laughs> yes. We're looking for like Oktoberfest. We, it's a great excuse to go to parties uh, is what sling it <laughs> turns out to be. You know, to I'll bring the sausage. And, you bring the beer. <laughs> yeah, it's it's kind of like you man, your barbecue, whatever you're going to, we're going to want to bring one of these. So, I've never had a game in all these years that I didn't have any qualms about highly recommending it to everyone with a family, you know, with the, they just tailgaters, whatever it is, I just know they're going to have a great time. And so that's maybe part of why we're taking it on personally. It's fun to go to the beach, go to parks, go to bars, go to places and, and get people's reaction to something and make little changes to it. Um, you know, like we might anyway, if we're developing an invention to pitch to a big company. But in this case, it really feels like it's the right way to go about this. And it's really, it's just fun. It's, it's sort of something we've always wanted to do. And this is the project to do it with. You get to make exactly what it is your heart wants on something like this. That's our, our goal is to get enough of them out there to really see if, if, uh, you know, lots of video, a lot of people posting about it, and that'll be a brand new thing for us, how to launch something from scratch. So Wish us luck. <laughs> well, the best of luck, Dan. Yeah. Uh, as always, it's so much fun hanging out with you. And uh, can't wait to see you in person next time. And <laughs> I'm going to take you on. <laughs> I, I hope so. You would definitely will. All right, guys, thank you so much. And uh, we'll see you later. Right. See ya. We'll see ya. This has been Hidden Roll the brains behind your favorite toys, games, and all things play. If you enjoyed this episode, the best way that you can support us is to subscribe to our YouTube channel and tell your favorite brains to subscribe as well. Hit the bell, thumbs up, leave a comment, and follow Hidden Roll Podcast on Instagram as well. If you know of someone who would be a great fit to be on our podcast, or if you'd like to learn the story behind any toy or game, leave a comment below or send us a message at hiddenrollpodcast.com forward slash suggestions. That's hidden, R-O-L-E, podcast.com. Once again, special thanks to Pop, People of Play, the one-stop hub for all toy and game inventors. Visit www.peopleofplay.com to learn more. This podcast is also made possible by the continued support of the brains who never grew up, inventors of play, streamlined design.